delve into the dark past where the origins of Halloween lie, where the line between the living and the dead was believed to be blurred. A journey back in time takes us to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain, a time when the veil between the realms of the living and the dead was thought to be at its thinnest. As the last leaves of autumn fell and the chill of winter began to creep in, the Celts marked this transitional period with a grand festival. Bonfires, their flames licking the night sky, were lit to ward off specters that were believed to roam the earth on this night. Costumes, both eerie and elaborate, were donned by the living, a clever disguise to blend in with the wandering spirits. As centuries rolled on, this Celtic tradition didn't fade into obscurity. Rather, it evolved, shaped by the ebb and flow of history and culture. Enter the early Christian church which saw an opportunity to merge pagan customs with Christian observances. November 1st was designated as All Saints Day, a time to honor saints and martyrs. The Eve of All Saints Day, All Hallows Eve, eventually became Halloween. Even with Christianity's influence, the ancient customs of Samhain refused to be wholly overshadowed. They persisted, blending with the new traditions. Bonfires may have dimmed, but the costumes remained, becoming more diverse and imaginative. Over time, Halloween took on a more lighthearted tone, a night of revelry, rather than fear. Fast forward to the present day, and Halloween has transformed again, this time under the influence of modern culture. The night once filled with bonfires and wandering spirits is now a celebration of candy and costumes. Haunted houses and horror movies have taken the place of ghostly visitations, and trick-or-treating has become a childhood tradition. And so, a festival to ward off spirits morphed into a night of candy and costumes. But not all Halloween tales are as sweet. Ever wondered why pumpkins are carved on Halloween? The legend of Stingy Jack holds the answer. Let's delve into the tale of a man infamous not for his virtue, but for his vice, his love for the bottle. Meet Stingy Jack, a notorious drunkard with a knack for deceit. In the heart of Ireland, Stingy Jack's reputation was far from stellar. He was known for his cunning tricks and never-ending thirst for ale, but one day, his mischief took a rather eerie turn when he managed to trick the devil himself. Yes, you heard that right, the devil. Jack, in his drunken stupor, somehow convinced the devil to climb an apple tree. Once the devil was in the branches, quick-thinking Jack carved a cross into the tree's trunk, trapping the devil up in the tree. Jack, always the opportunist, made a deal with the devil, his freedom for a promise that Jack's soul would never be claimed by hell. The devil, left with no choice, agreed. Years later, when Jack's life inevitably came to an end, he found himself at the gates of heaven, but given his life of deceit and debauchery, he was denied entry. Hoping to find refuge in hell, he was met with a harsh reminder of his past deal with the devil, who also refused him entry. Doomed to wander the earth for eternity, Jack pleaded with the devil for some light to navigate the darkness. The devil, perhaps with a hint of malicious amusement, threw Jack an ember from the fires of hell. Jack, ever resourceful, hollowed out a turnip he had with him and used it to carry the ember, creating a makeshift lantern. This tale, passed down through generations, led to the tradition of carving scary faces into pumpkins or jack-o'-lanterns to ward off evil spirits during Halloween. So, the next time you carve a pumpkin, remember Stingy Jack wandering in the darkness. Even the most prestigious house in America isn't safe from the supernatural. The White House, a place of power, has its own ghostly tales. This iconic symbol of American leadership is more than just a building. It's a monument to the country's history, a testament to the power of democracy, and if you believe the stories, a regular haunt for some of the nation's most famous former residents. You may think of the White House as a place of policy and diplomacy, but it also has a side that's shrouded in whispers of the paranormal. One of the most frequently cited specters is none other than Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States. Lincoln, whose leadership during one of the country's most tumultuous times left an indelible mark on the nation, is said to have never really left the White House. Over the years, presidents, guests, and staff have reported seeing his tall, lanky figure, often in the Lincoln bedroom, once his office. Some even claim to have heard the echoes of his footsteps or the rustle of his clothes. President Theodore Roosevelt was one of the first to share his encounter with Lincoln's ghost, he reportedly saw the former president standing by the fireplace, as if deep in thought. Years later, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, while a guest at the White House, had his own eerie experience. After a long bath, he walked into the adjoining bedroom to find Lincoln leaning on the fireplace, seemingly absorbed in contemplation. 
Even in modern times, the ghostly sightings continue. President Ronald Reagan's dog, Rex, would often bark frantically at the Lincoln bedroom and refuse to go inside. And Reagan's own daughter Maureen claimed to have seen Lincoln standing at the window looking out onto the Washington landscape. These tales of spectral sightings add an extra layer of intrigue to the historical richness of the White House. It seems that the spirits of the past are drawn to this place of power, perhaps as a reminder of their own legacy, or maybe because they have unfinished business. But one thing's for sure, perhaps even the spirits of the past can't resist the allure of the White House. Halloween Night, 1938, a broadcast that caused mass panic. The power of fiction or something more sinister. In the annals of Halloween history, one event stands out for its eerie confluence of fiction and reality. It was a time when radio was king and the power of the spoken word could stir imaginations and fuel fears in a way today's media can only dream of. Picture this, it's a cold, dark night, the streets are awash with the laughter of trick-or-treaters, the scent of candy fills the air. Inside families huddle around their radios waiting for the evening's entertainment. Little did they know that the frights they'd encounter wouldn't just be imaginary. The voice on the radio begins a narrative. It's a play, an adaptation of H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. But to the unsuspecting listeners, it was no mere story. The convincing narrative, presented as a series of news bulletins, led many to believe that an alien invasion was actually happening. The switchboards lit up, panic spread like wildfire. People packed their cars ready to flee, others barricaded themselves in their homes. The power of the broadcast was such that it transcended the realm of fiction and manifested as a real, tangible fear. The line between reality and imagination blurred, creating a phenomenon that would be remembered for generations to come. But was it merely the power of the spoken word that caused such widespread panic? Or was there something more at play? Could it be that the fear of the unknown, the dread of what lurks in the dark corners of the universe, was so deeply embedded in the human psyche that a simple radio play could trigger such a reaction? The War of the Worlds broadcast serves as a stark reminder of how fear can be manipulated, how easily we can be led to believe in the unbelievable. It's a testament to the power of storytelling, the magic of radio, and the enduring allure of Halloween, a night when anything seems possible, even an alien invasion. A chilling reminder of the power of words and the fear they can instill. Even in our modern world, ghost stories persist. One such tale is of the haunted eBay painting. This is not a tale from centuries past, but from the turn of the millennium, where technology meets the supernatural in a chilling blend of the old and new. The painting in question is titled, The Hands Resist Him, a seemingly innocent piece of art, depicting a boy and a doll standing in front of a glass door. It was sold on eBay in the early 2000s, but it was not the artwork itself that drew attention, it was the eerie happenings that surrounded it. The sellers claimed that the characters in the painting moved during the night, shifting positions and even stepping out of the canvas. They also reported a tangible wave of dread that washed over anyone who looked at it. They posted the painting on eBay, hoping to rid themselves of the unsettling piece. The internet was set ablaze with curiosity and skepticism. Bids poured in, driven by a morbid fascination with the potentially haunted artwork. The painting was eventually sold for over a thousand dollars, bought by an art gallery in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The new owners reported no unusual activities. The figures remained still, the eerie sensation was absent. Was it an elaborate hoax or had the haunting ceased? The mystery deepened further when it was discovered that the artist, Bill Stoneham, based the painting on a photograph from his childhood. He was surprised by the stories, stating he intended no supernatural implications in his work. As with any good ghost story, the truth remains elusive. The haunted eBay painting is a chilling reminder of how even in the age of technology, we are not immune to the inexplicable and the paranormal. It's a modern testament to our timeless fascination with the supernatural, a fascination that peaks around this time of the year. Whether you believe in ghosts or not, these stories remind us of the chilling thrill that comes with the unknown, especially on Halloween night.